Welcome to True 911 Calls. When faced with situations while out in public where there are signs of obvious child abuse, the ways in which humans react can be varied. Some choose to move on with their lives not wanting to place themselves in the middle of another family's business. Others feel they have no other alternative but to act. Those in the latter category will sometimes have to come up with creative workarounds in order to make the situation right. Fate placed Orlando, Florida waitress Flavane Carvalho in this exact position on New Year's Day 2021. Flavane was not scheduled to work at the small restaurant where she was employed that day, but by chance, another employee had called in sick. The whole of the day had been very busy and proceeded without incident, but by the end of the day, the Mrs. Potato restaurant was only partially filled. One of the tables still in use was occupied by a family of four, two adults and two children, an 11-year-old boy and a four-year-old girl. Flavain, who was not assigned to the table, noticed a number of off-putting occurrences while taking the family's order. Previous to the waitress's first approach to the table, she did notice a scratch on the boy's face. When she came over to see if they needed anything else, she noticed multiple visible bruises on the boy, including on his face. Flavane also took note of the fact that the 11-year-old was also the only one at the table who did not receive a food order. The adult male, later identified as the child's stepfather, stated that the boy would eat when they arrived at home. Being a mother herself and recognizing the multiple red flags of child abuse, the heroic waitress immediately did her due diligence to make sure the boy was okay. She hastily created a small sign to silently ask if he was okay and if he needed help, and placed it in a manner that he could only see. When he was able to confirm Flavane's suspicions that he was being abused, she discreetly dialed 911. Before we proceed, be sure that you subscribe to this channel to be notified every time we post a new true 911 call. Orlando Police 911, this is Sahar on the recorded line. What's the address of your emergency? It's 4550 so, uh, South Kirkman Road. 4550 South Kirkman Road? Yes. All right, do you need the police or the paramedics there? Um, I don't know. I need you. I, I don't know what to do. We, I'm a manager of a restaurant, okay. and we have some customers here with two kids. One of the kids is with a lot of bruises on his arms and on his uh, face. Okay. And the parent is not done uh, giving food for him, but is giving to the another kid that are with them. And uh, the one is so quiet, and I ask him on a paper if he needs help. Uh -huh. And first he uh, turned his head saying that no, but he keep looking at me and I write in another paper if he needs help again. And he uh, make me a sign that yes, he needs help. So I don't know what to do. Okay, so are they at the restaurant right now? Yes. Okay, what's the name of the place? It's Mrs. Potato Restaurant. Mrs. Potato Restaurant? Mrs. Potato, uh-huh. All right, and uh, uh, the family that's there, is, is it a... Uh, uh, how old is the child, first of all? How old does he look uh, to you? About eight years old. It's a couple with two kids, a little girl and the boy. The boy is the one that a parent uh, is in trouble. I'm super concerned and I don't know what to do. Can you give me some advice what I what I can do? Um, well, I can send the police over there. You're just gonna. The only thing is they have to be there. The police has to be able to see them when they get there, so they can talk to the child. That's the only thing okay. we can say. What's your name? Oh, my name is Flavioni. Flavioni. Mm-hmm. Okay, and what's a good phone number to reach you? Um, 407. Focus on the key, though it's not there. It's just a second. 407. Uh, just a second. I need to confirm. I'm so nervous right now.
Okay. Okay. They are about to leave in about 10 to 15 minutes. Okay, hold on. Mas o copo já está fechado. Não, mas aqui fora. Não. 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 All right, Fabioni, I'm going to go ahead and send the police over to you. Um, we're asking everybody that's meeting with the officers if you've had the flu, any flu-like symptoms or had contact with somebody that has recently? No, no, no. Okay. Also, how many people did you say were there in total again? I'm sorry? Uh, it's a family of four. Two kids and two adults. One family kid of four, about... so two kids and two adults? Yes. Okay. And the other kids are being treated fairly from what it looks like? I'm sorry? The other kids look like they're being treated fairly? No, just the boy It's uh, with bruises and he's not eating. The others uh, are eating. And we, when we uh, get their orders, uh -huh. uh, we ask what the boy is going to eat. And the uh -huh. father, uh, the man said, no, he's not going to eat anything. He's going to have his uh, dinner at home. And the tree is eating, and the boy is uh, separate from them, and they are they give anything to him. Okay. All okay. right. Well, just keep an eye on them. Of course, you can't stop them from leaving or anything, but uh, I will let the you know the police will come out there as soon as possible. Just call us back if anything changes before they leave. Uh, just to confirm, also, do you see any weapons on anybody? No. Okay. Did you ever did you ever weapons. see him being assaulted in any way or anything like that, or no? No. Okay, got it. All right, no problem. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. When police arrived, they questioned the boy and the adults separately. The 11-year-old was able to describe the mistreatment he was receiving from his stepfather, the adult male at the table, who was identified as 34-year-old Timothy Wilson II. The shocking declarations included beatings with brooms, being punched while hung upside down, and being handcuffed to his bed. Both Wilson and his wife Kristen Swan were arrested on site. For his part, Timothy Wilson II has been charged with multiple counts of child abuse. As this is a new case, no trial has taken place as of the date of this video. As it turns out, this was not new behavior for Wilson. After the arrest, police spoke with his previous wife, Amanda Powell, who described their relationship as volatile. Based on her claims, Powell ended their marriage after just one year due to physical abuse that he allegedly committed against her sons, both from a previous relationship. It's been reported that Wilson was possibly abusive towards his ex-wife as well. As the information stands currently, the four-year-old girl also with the family inside the restaurant did not show signs of abuse and had not confessed to having been a victim. This is believed to be due to the fact that she is the biological daughter of Timothy Wilson II, as his history of malevolence has been supposedly directed only at his line of stepchildren. The biological father of the 11-year-old survivor, Keith Lewis, was split from Kristen Swan before their son was born. He has stated that he was not allowed to be in his son's life for six years due to the tumultuous relationship between the two adults. Keith Lewis is now seeking full custody of his son, a case that is also in the process of being resolved. A Las Vegas veteran cop called to confess to the killing of his wife, Michelle, and their five-year-old son, Maximilian. During the call, Hans Walters explains his actions and declares that he has set his house on fire and will shoot anyone coming towards him. When the police arrived, they saw him standing in the doorway before he eventually went back inside only to take his own life. 911, what's the address of your emergency? Hi, 1313 Esther Drive, Boulder City, Nevada. Okay, and what phone number are you calling from? 259-8979. And what's the problem? Tell me exactly what happened. Uh, my name is Hans Walters. Mm -hmm. uh, I work for Las Vegas Metropolitan Police Department. Uh, I just shot and killed my son, Max, and my wife, Michelle, and I killed her because 
She's in such chronic pain from her neck and back and on more medicines and she's not going to survive. And we were both seeing a therapist and a psychologist in Boulder City. His name is Jay Summers. And uh, I feel terrible for doing it. Okay, you and don't have you... Voice out. Please don't, please don't interrupt me, please. Okay. Uh, I, I've also set the house on fire, and an if the fire department comes to my house, because there's a fire hydrant right in front of my house, uh, I'm going to open fire on them. So I have to wait till the house is burning, and then I'm going to shoot myself, okay? So okay, I don't sir? Need, I don't ask me any questions. This is, this is real. This isn't a joke. The fire alarm's in the background is because I set the garage and the bedroom on fire. My wife's in the bedroom. I shot her in the head. My son, unfortunately, is in the living room watching Oswald, and I shot him in the head, too. And, uh, oh, forgive me for my sins. Please don't call back. Thank you. The most shocking part of this call isn't even the events that are unfolding. Some family dispute involving a son trying to commit suicide and eventually stabbing his father. No, the reason this call came under the spotlight is because of the attitude of the 911 dispatcher who handled the call so badly that she was terminated shortly after. Listen to her patronizing the poor distraught woman. As for the father, he was later pronounced dead at the hospital. Hi, I have a suicidal teenager at House 503 Nighthawk Drive. I need an ambulance immediately. What's your name? Calm down and tell me your address again. Excuse me? Tell me your address, ma'am. 503 Nighthawk Drive. And your phone number there. Tell me exactly what happened. It's still happening. He is trying to kill himself. I need an ambulance okay. now. Miss Roberts, yelling at me is not helping. I'm asking I'm someone sorry. else is sending sorry. the unit. Answer my questions. How is he trying to harm himself? He is trying to stab himself. Does he have a knife? Yes. How old is he? He's 20. Who is he? Why? What happened? The yells are already dispatching help to you. My asking questions is not delaying that. It's helping them. I no, I understand that. With you. Okay, I understand that. Where is he at with the knife? I don't know. Okay. He left the house. Okay, the, you do know he left the house. Did he leave on foot or did he leave in a car? He left on foot, but I don't, I don't know where he's Okay, going. what's he look like? He's African American. He's not very tall, about five seven. He has um, kind of like it's. Not an afro, but it's short. I think he's short not afro? like that. Okay, you ma'am, like ma'am, calm down for me. You're not helping anybody by being out of control. Where is your father, Miss <laughs> Roberts? Miss <laughs> Roberts. We need CPR. We need help. Okay, okay. I get it, ma'am. Stop. Calm down. Get an ambulance, ma'am. They're on the way. Who needs CPR? Ma'am, can you hear me? I've got somebody stabbed, CPR requested, and nobody's answering me. Get somebody there now. The last call for today is a particularly tragic one, involving the death of Riker Peterson, a five-month-old violently shot in the head by his father, Joshua Peterson, a 21-year-old. Investigators said he laid Riker down on the couch, walked to the other room where he loaded a single 22 round into his rifle, then returned to fire the shot into his baby's head. He cooperated with investigators after his arrest, but the motive remained uncertain. However, it appears that Peterson may have been planning the shooting for up to a month. One possible reason that could have pushed Joshua to commit this crime was his own recent breakup with the boy's mother, Amanda Pilling. The couple were described by relatives as having a volatile relationship. According to testimonies from his family, Joshua was suffering from depression and regularly posted on social media about his son being his only source of joy. 
Family members also described him as a very controlling person who might have felt the need to reassert his power when he felt he had lost it. 911, what's the address of your emergency? 582 North, 500 East. Roll the cops, roll an ambulance. Shots fired, a baby's been hit in the head. Please come now. Okay, don't hang up, okay? Please. I need medical. Baby was shot. Baby shot. Father's trying to shoot himself. Who, who shot the baby? The father. Where, where's he at right now? He oh, gave me that gun. Where, where's the baby? The baby's in his father's arms. Okay. Have the gun. You have the gun? Baby's still breathing. Is the baby alive? Ma'am. He's still breathing, please. Roll. The baby's still breathing? Yes. Okay, I want you to watch her breathing for me till they get there, okay? Who, sh who shot the baby? His daddy. His dad? And why did he do that? No, I wanted... Did he do... Why did he shoot the baby? I have no goddamn idea, please. Just... Okay, but he doesn't have the gun any longer, right? No, he doesn't. Okay, I want you to watch the baby and keep watching to make sure the baby's breathing for me, okay? Are you are we are you doing that for me? Yes. He's, okay. He's gone. The baby's gone. He's been shot in the head. <sighs> I know, who are you, ma'am? I'm the grandma. You're the grandma. Yeah. And where's the mother at? I have no idea, and I don't care. Please. Okay. So why did why did he do it? I don't know. Oh, the baby's still alive. Please. Okay. Please, he just made a okay, we're, we're getting them coming, but don't hang up, okay? Please, 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 send the cops. Please, send the cops. She's not saying it's six years, just so you know. She's pretty distraught. Oh, God, please. Right here. Grandma's here. Okay, where's the father at? He's standing next to me. Okay. Is he... Please. 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 Please.